Noah Cahan and Sam Fender with Homesick. Welcome back. It is the Country Viewpoint here on your colour of Country Life. Flow FM, where we're taking a look at a topic that we'll be exploring quite heavily this week, and it relates to clean energy. And joining me on the line now is Dr. Ben Ewald. He is from the Doctors for the Environment Australia Peak Body, who are strongly urging the federal and state governments to get behind renewable energy such as wind and solar as clean energy will save lives and improve the health of all Australians. Great to be with you, Ben. How are you? Pretty well. How are you going, Alice? Not too bad at all. We've got a fair amount to discuss. So uh, firstly, just uh, give us the sort of uh, nutshell understanding as to why it is that doctors are coming out in support of clean energy at the moment. Yeah, look, this brings from our fears that climate change is becoming an urgent health problem for Australians. I work in general practice and I have many elderly patients you know, who are, have fairly you know, diverse range of health conditions and I am living in fear of you know, the next heat wave if we get a string of days over 40 degrees, maybe you know, five days in a row. At those kind of temperatures, people start dying and it's a very you know, serious problem um, and I worry that you know, my patients may not come through it next time there's a heat wave of that severity. Okay, well uh, I'd like to just explore the scientific evidence, the strong scientific evidence as the media release says as to the exposure of the low frequency sound from wind farms which does not cause adverse health effects such as the fictitious wind farm syndrome, again to quote this media release. Uh, We know that there's mass rallies going on in Canberra this week because of the fact that a lot of people who live in regional and rural areas who have these types of wind farms in around their property uh, are strongly against them. So tell us more about this scientific evidence as to why they shouldn't worry so much about the uh, adverse health effects. Yeah, look, there were stories circulated around about people having all kinds of health problems supposed to be due to living near wind farms. And recently, some researchers in Sydney did very detailed and good research on this taking groups of volunteers and exposing them in a, in a research setting to either genuine infrasound, that's the low frequency sound up to 20 hertz that can't be heard by humans, either true infrasound or sham infrasound or actual traffic noise. And then they followed up in looking at you know their sleep patterns and their uh, stress hormones and all kinds of things. And they could show that traffic noise was having adverse effects on people, but they showed no effect from the infrasound exposure. So, you know, infrasound is a real thing, but infrasound is not harmful to humans. That that has been proven in in, in quality scientific research, and that question never needs to be researched again. That is Dr. Ben Ewald. He's one of the spokespersons for the Doctors for the Environment Australia Peak Body We'll pick his brains on a few other topics in a few short moments' time here on the Country Viewpoint during our second hour of the Tuesday program. I'll be back with plenty more real soon. Stay tuned. Pink Marshmallow and Sting with the song Dreaming and welcome back. It is the Country Viewpoint on Flow FM. It is a specially themed program today as we take a look at the Renewables Rally happening today in Canberra. Well, one of the proponents of clean energy is Dr. Ben Ewald. He represents the Doctors for the Environment Australia Peak Body as a spokesperson. You're a proponent of this clean energy drive just looking at the energy aspect of this going forward, obviously it brings into question the economic state of many people who rely on uh, the fossil fuel industry in more regional parts of the country. Uh, you're saying that they'll benefit through uh, an entirely new industry with uh, renewables being relied upon more. So just elaborate on that for us. Yeah, look, Australia's coal-fired power stations are all getting very old and reaching the end of their life and they're going to be shut down. The question is what they're replaced with and <clears throat> the cheapest new renewable en- new energy source, the cheapest new energy source of any kind nowadays is solar farms and wind farms. But because solar farms don't work at night, obviously, wind farms have a very important role in providing you know, continuous electricity and they're the key technologies that will allow Australia to move away from burning coal for electricity. 
So burning coal is the major contribution to heating, to climate warming. And burning coal has other direct health effects from the air pollution produced um, and from the health effects on the people who have to mine and handle the coal. So you know, diseases like pneumoconiosis, the fibrotic lung disease that coal miners get, uh, you know, those are, have to be remembered also as other health effects from the handling of coal. So from a regional uh, Australian perspective, you know, there'll be a whole lot of new jobs coming into regional areas, both to build wind farms and to do the maintenance for them. And there are um, arrangements being put in place where, you know, farmers hosting wind farms will receive payments for them as same as the transmission lines. And this can really be a big boost for regional economies, especially when you think that this income won't be weather dependent. So, you know, in regional areas where often there's great financial hardship during a drought, for instance, um, you know, the the income stream from renewable energy projects, of course, is going to see people over those hard times. So I would have thought that regional regional Australians would be very happy to see these uh, projects being developed. Well, I'm sure you're going to be met with a lot of resistance going forward from some sections of the farming community in Outback Australia. They certainly don't like the uh, the idea of the noise, um, which we've already addressed, and obviously um, the infrastructure sort of being in the way of things as well is something they also don't like. Um, just going on the reliability of... Uh, clean energy going forward are you sort of prepared to be met with uh, a lot of resistance that you will get as far as just um you know the uh, objections people have to relying on this source of power look my, my expertise is in health um if you want to ask questions about reliability of energy systems you'd better get a power engineer um i i you know this is the direction that australian policy is going and the experts tell us that this is the future of the energy system, um, but that's not my field of expertise. And just to reiterate, you've uh, dealt with situations or uh, been engaged in conversations about people who have been impacted by working in or near fossil fuel plants uh, over a long period of time? Certainly. We, I've had patients who you know, grew up in the Hunter Valley around the coal mines there and had asthma you know, at some childhood, and they always felt that their asthma was contributed to by the dust um, from those mines, it, there, there are a number of direct health impacts from the way fossil fuels are currently done, and those things are, are going to be, uh, you know, those are the health benefits, the extra health benefits that will come from shifting out of those fossil fuel industries. Dr. Ben Ewald is a spokesperson for the Doctors for the Environment Australia Peak Body. We thank you very much, Ben, for your time on the program and all the best with everything going forward. Thanks, Alex. Yeah. Plenty more to come on this important day for farmers across the Flow FM network. We'll be back with you real soon here on the Country Viewpoint. Don't go anywhere.